Hello, and welcome back to Zim Explorer. I'm Dr. Abstract, and in this Zim Explorer, we're going to take a look at how to customize components. So let's go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com, and we'll have a look. All right, so if we go to the docs, we can find all our various components. Most of those are under display objects right here. Display, and here are the components. So that includes labels, buttons, windows, panels, panes, etc. So those are the main components. And sometimes components are made from other components as well. So a button happens to be a rectangle or other parts. A rectangle is not a component. It's a shape, but also a, a label is in a button, which is a component. And then a tab is made up of a bunch of buttons and a so components can sometimes be made up of components. Um, also, there are some more custom type components down below here. Uh, for instance, in the cam, we have little widgets that we use, such as the cam alpha right here. So if we expand open the cam alpha, this extends a container, a Zim container, which extends a CreateJS container. And that's one of the first things to note when you're up here is find out what type of object it is. And if it's, if it's a container, that means that this cam alpha will get all of the properties of a container. It also means that if it's a container and you want to change its color, containers may not change, well, probably won't change a color unless we give the cam alpha specifically a property for that. So if we take a look at the properties, there is no property here called background color or color. Uh, however, there's a property called backing. So probably that's how we could go in and change its color is by uh, accessing the backing or changing things in the backing. We also have already a color. So this is the, if we want to customize the component, look at its parameters. The parameter is the first step. That's what we're giving you as you're making the object. So uh, that will be able to do that. However, there's no alpha of that. So note that we didn't say what is the alpha of this uh, cam alpha widget. <laughs> Nothing to do with the actual alpha that it's setting. It turns out that the cam alpha um, will take on whatever alpha the the cam is, so you also have a cam object. And when you make the cam object, you can set its default alpha, and that's what the cam alpha will control and use. But anyway, aside from that, let's go down to another one. How about the cam controls? So that's a widget, and perhaps we could show you what that looks like so you, you get an idea. Okay, let's uh, reduce this down, F11, and I have some code here that has a cam ask. Oh, that was cam controls. Let's uh, go down to cam ask. Right here, cam ask. There we go. So that has a color and a background color. Um, that means that pretty well, if we view this open in default browser, uh, the color will be the color of the text. That's how it usually goes. And the background color is that white thing. So if we wanted to customize this component, uh, we could do it that way. Sometimes the components uh, are just kind of individual, kind of quickly made, and they don't, uh, they're not giving you a lot of options. For instance, we're not, we've got, we don't have an option to handle these rings. We don't have an option to handle what the words say. We don't have a, an option to handle the shape of this, etc. So you might want to customize beyond what's available. If that's the case, you can always make your own components as well. Like these are just, it's just a circle with a couple buttons. So make a circle with a couple buttons and, you know, do your own components. But um, if you wanted to customize some of this, let's see how we would do that. So uh, here is the cam ask right here, a new cam ask. And we can customize it by passing in the colors here, as mentioned. But imagine that we're working with a component where the parameters weren't available. So we wanted to change something, and there was no parameters to uh, set that. What we would do then is you would operate on the object. This is the object, new cam ask. We're storing it in ask. We would operate that on that after we make it. 
So this is all a dot show, and there's the, the function that goes in the dot show. Okay, this thing from this bracket to that bracket. Um, this is the function that we do when we close. Okay, anyway, or uh, I think it's the function on, yeah, on the response or whatever. So yes is going to be true if we accept the camera, but otherwise it's going to be false and we'll put up a pane. Anyway, we want to go after we ask. So that's down here in the next line. Um, we can say ask dot uh, scale or ska is equal to 0.5. So let's have a look and see what happens when we do that. Now it's smaller. What if we wanted to move it? We could say dot pose at 0, comma, uh, 100, comma, from the center. And the default is top there. Um, so we don't really need the top, but that completes it. And now we've positioned it. So that's operating on an object after it's made. But say we didn't, didn't want to do that stuff. You can also uh, access, what if, could we do ask dot background color equals red? Let's see if that works. And then we'll talk about why it does or doesn't. So there it is. And I don't see it's, it's not red. So let's go look at the cam ask. It extends a pane. So down below here, we look at the, uh, it's got parameters of those parameters, that's great. But when we're operating on something afterwards, we're operating on the properties. So here are the properties. Type, the name of the class is a string, uh, everything will get that property. Label, and that can be handy. So for instance, um, we're going to show you how to, how to look through all of the parts of a component. And it's handy to know what what you're looking at and sometimes if you just look at the code for that part it's complicated looking and but if you ask for its type then it's nice and easy uh, here's a reference to the label and a reference to the yes button and a reference to the no button but there's no reference in here to the background shape so it's like oh darn nor is there uh, a reference or a um, more than a reference a property for the background color or the color so why would that be? Ah, and then it says C pane for properties such as backdrop color, etc. So because this extends a pane right here, extends a zim pane, that means it gets all of the methods and properties of a pane. And we didn't list them all here. Instead, we said, go see the pane for more properties. And the pane extends a container. So then you can go see the zim container for more properties. The zim container extends a create.js container, and you can go to the create.js docs to find out more of its basic properties. So that's how it works. We don't list all of the properties here, only the specific properties that are new to this component. Okay, so if we go back to the pane, pane, just be careful, pane sometimes opens up panel first, which is pretty close. <laughs> so if we were at the top and we hit pane and hit go, oh, we get the pane, that's good, but there's panel. All right, so back on pane right here, we come on down and don't look at its, uh, don't look at its, its parameters, uh, nor its methods. In this case, we want its properties. So here are the various properties. Ah, it has a backing property. Yay! So that means we can access the backing of this afterwards by using the backing property. So we tried to do background color uh, right here, but that's not going to do it. Instead, we have to access the backing dot. Now let's see if this works. You ready? And then we'll talk about why it does or doesn't work go we refresh oh it didn't work so the backing or display reference to the pane box okay this is actually a rectangle perhaps we should have been a bit more precise about it that's usually we say it's a zim rectangle <laughs> um, and uh, let me have a look here there's the content title bar backdrop that's a backdrop that covers the stage and we didn't say rect so we weren't in the mood of precisely saying that that's a zim rectangle but yes it is a zim rectangle on most uh, docs we would say that so if it's a zim rectangle we would then look at a rectangle or 
Let's look at a rectangle, rectangle. Uh, you probably know this by now if you've been using Zim, but what are the properties of a rectangle? Not the, not the parameters, not the parameters, because this is after the rectangle is made, so we need to go to the properties. Down here in the properties, we have color. Get and set the fill color of the rectangle. There is no background color. We've got border color, we've got um, uh, corner, etc. So we could try some of that stuff. But we can only adjust the properties that are here or indeed for a container or for the um, CreateJS container. Okay, so we come back here and instead of background color, because we're now accessing a rectangle, we will go color. And we refresh here. Oh my goodness, we've made a color of red. And we can also access other things like um, the uh, corner. Uh, that's kind of funny. I never thought of that. It, it looks like a circle. It's not a circle because the corner must be the same shape. So if we have a corner, all we've done is we've taken the pane has a backing. And the pane's backing is by default a rectangle because the panes are usually rectangular. But for the cam ask, we've hard coded in a corner that matches, well, let me just put a corner of 20 here and you can kind of see what's going on. So we're using a pane. This is a pane that holds all this stuff. We're extending that. And the pane usually has a rectangle that is its backing. Oh, it's almost an optical illusion with those rings there, isn't it? So if you wanted a cam ask that was not a circle, say it was uh, maybe only a 10 corner like that, and this is what you wanted, we have a bit of a problem in that uh, it looks pretty good, but why are these rings here? So how do we get rid of the rings? Or if, if we wanted to, we could try and turn the rings into a rectangle. That's not gonna be very easy because it turns out these rings, I think, are probably just circles there. So let's have a look to see how we would access those circles. Here's where we start doing some, uh, first of all, there's, there's nothing in the docs. So when we look at the docs here, um, this would be for a pane. The pane doesn't have any, no, pane doesn't normally have rings going around it. So back on the cam ask here, cam ask, let's have a look. Uh, that's what we're doing, right? Properties, type, label, yes and no. We had no reference to the rings. It, it was just like when we made this thing, it's like, just deal with it. Use this component, it's fine. If you don't want to use this one, make your own, but this is what we're giving you. So we didn't, we're not going to go and give you, here's access to each ring, and it just wasn't worth it. It's, it's, that's too much extra coding when nobody's going to want that, or, or probably not. So, however, if we want to customize it, we would then have to go in and try and find those rings. So the way you can do that is ask is a pane. A pane is a container, and a container has uh, an, a, the Zim container extends a CreateJS container, and the CreateJS container has a very root ability to access anything inside of it, and that is called get child at. All right, so uh, we can go get child at zero, and that will get the first child in this um, in this pane or in the in the component. So let's find out what it is, and this here is where we can zog. And we'll zog in, how about green? Sounds more friendly. Well, we've already got a green at the top. We'll zog in orange. Get cam ask, that, and let's have a look. So we do that, we come back here. And when we refresh, we F12. And okay, I can kind of get that that's a shape. Um, and there's the shape thing like that, because it must've been made with a shape. Be careful of a shape. You cannot set, if you go to the Zim shape, you cannot set the color of a shape with a property. So I was going to show you, well, let me just show you a few more uh, and then we'll um, drop back there. So here's number one, here's child one, is a rectangle. So I can kind of tell that's a rectangle. And for the most part, this is gonna give you the class, <clears throat> the class that it's made from. But if you want a slightly easier way and um, sometimes, uh, Zim will label certain things like perhaps that shape, it might be labeled as backdrop rather than shape. But most of the time it is what the class it is. But sometimes it can be helpful to ask for this dot type and it will give you a better indication. It's not just any shape, it's a special shape. Uh, so we go here, now it says rectangle. 
uh, which is a little bit easier. What does zero tell us? Probably just a shape still, I would imagine. And it does. So it's a shape, which means that's this backdrop right here. So the big backdrop is a shape. And that's that's tricky because if we go to the sorry, if we go to the Zim shape here, shape. It's a custom shape, make shape, shape right here, and scroll on down. There's its methods, here's its properties. Type, command, group, width, height, width only, draggable, level, depth, blend mode, effects, hue, saturation, brightness, and contrast. There is no color. You cannot set the color of a shape. You'd have to remake the shape. So um, that's interesting. That means we can't change the color of the backdrop. Uh, but most people would never do that, so we didn't mind and we decided at the time that a pane was made which was quite early on in Zim we were being as efficient as possible we said okay I'm not going to make this a Zim rectangle uh, because a Zim rectangle has extra things on top of the shape it, it includes a shape inside it but it also has extra things a rectangle plus it has all the the properties that are getter setter methods to be able to change corner and color and we didn't think people would want to do that with the backdrop so we made it a shape to be efficient. Now, looking back, it's sort of like, well, sometimes possibly somebody might want to change the backdrop color of, of, uh, of it dynamically afterwards. <laughs> you know. Anyway, anyway, blah, 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 blah. This is a, a Zim Explorer after all, you know, so we get some storytelling in here, don't we? Yeah, we, you guys agree? It's a Zim Explorer, a bit of storytelling. Um, so, Anyway, that's that stuff. So we were going through these and let's find it. We're, we're looking for those circles. Let's find out what the next one is here. It's a container of some sort. Uh, it's possible that that container could contain those circles. And if we wanted to find out, we could go dot get child at uh, zero, for instance. And so basically, we we found a container. What's in there? And so now we're going to get the first thing in in that container and ask for its type, and it tells us a label. So and, oh, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, but anyway, it's not what we're looking for. So we'll go back to the main ones here. What's number three? Number three is a button. So it might be one of those buttons. And uh, number four. Refresh is a label, and number five, I'm sorry, I didn't show it to you, but I'm just hunting through until we find the circle. That's another button, and number six is a circle. Okay, there we go. So number six is one of the circles, probably the first. So how how would we check for that? We can now say, okay, great, we got, we got one of the circles. We'll get rid of this stuff. Ask dot get child at six dot color. Uh, we have to be a little bit careful. Equals red. You know what's going to happen if we do this? It made the whole color of the circle red, not the border color. So if we wanted to just check the border color, then uh, then we could. So there's a border color of red, and we refresh here. Now that first circle, that first circle has a border color of red. We just want to turn them off. So I expect it would be something like dot remove from would be probably pretty good as long as we don't need it. Dot remove from would work. And if we refresh here, we could also set the alpha down so that that removed it. Um, we could set the alpha down. We could say viz false, viz well, sometimes when you remove things, uh, usually with Zim it's okay, but sometimes if you remove things, you might break something because it's expected to be there. Uh, um, but even removes, usually we can set uh, methods and properties on an object that is removed from the stage and we'll be okay. But if we try to outline it or something and it's not on the stage, it might give us a warning saying, ah, oh, we can't do that, it's not on the stage because you removed it. But anyway. Uh, remove from would probably, we could even, if we never need it again, we can dispose it. And that would be the, the best from a memory standpoint. Just dispose it, that removes it, and also deletes uh, other, other things if it has any, uh, any 
um, events attached to it, which it wouldn't, but anyway. There it is, it's disposed, and we would probably do that with number seven and number eight, most likely. Seven and eight. And when we refresh, oh, and so one of them cannot read properties of undefined reading disposed, okay, on number 42. So 42 didn't have a dispose. <laughs> We got two of them. What the heck? I would have expected those rings would have all been made together. So that was number five. What was number five? We're, we're still then hunting. What what was type number eight then? Uh, Zog. And why weren't all of them made together? Probably were, but okay, let's see. Yeah, let's, and then we'll ask dot type. Oh, I know what's going on. <laughs> Do you know what's going on? They were made together. Ooh, that's tricky. But because we disposed number six, now get child at seven um, is a, a different. So we should dispose them in reverse order. Ah, interesting. Whereas if we removed from, oh yeah, it would have been the same problem. When you remove something, it's no longer a child. Therefore, the child number... Uh, is different. This is why when you loop, by the way, when you loop, you want to always loop backwards if you're removing something. So in, and it makes it very easy in a zim loop. Zim loop looks like this. Loop mm, through some container. You would get the child like this. Pass it in there. And then the next parameter here, true, is reverse. So if you're removing a child, child from and that will automatically remove it from the container if you were looping through the container to remove certain children or remove them if there's a hit test if some sort of hit test then remove child um, then loop backwards and that's how you loop backwards and we're experiencing it <laughs> kind of ma manually in a sense where if we remove number six this child that was seven becomes six the child that was eight becomes seven. There is no child at eight anymore, so we can't dispose it. And we've missed disposing number seven because it dropped to number six. So uh, yeah, that's a little bit twisty, isn't it? Okay, so all three of these were made together and we do want a dispose, but bum, 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 we want to dispose it backwards. This is a very custom case. Eight, we removed the eighth, we removed the seventh, and we removed the sixth. And uh, there we go. Randy him. Fun with programming. And then they're all gone, and we have a cam ask with no rings. All right, if you wanted to avoid that issue, you could have dot alp to them. But then they'd still be there. Alpha zero. I don't think they, they're not going to take up much memory, and then we could have done it in this order. Six, seven, and eight. Alpha zero, no problem. Same thing. We can set those to an alpha of one, two, but that would not be what we want. I don't know what the alphas are set uh, on those ring Then that does look darker. So if you wanted your rings to be darker, that would be just your alphas that needed to be set. Okay, so by default, I think they're, they are lighter than that, weren't they? I don't know, maybe they weren't. Yeah, oh, they're alpha, this one's a bit darker. That one's in, in sort of a fading alpha. Ooh, nice. Okay, you see the details we put into making, making components. Anyway, uh, that that's a little bit about how you can customize components then in Zim, and you can do the same thing with any of those other components in your, uh, in here, in your methods. All oh, sorry, not the methods. Any components in the display objects. So this stuff right here. Radial menus, D pads, waiters, etc. You can uh, apply that. Remember what you do, though. You would look at the waiter. I saw a waiter. Where was the waiter? Waiter. You would look at what it extends. It extends a container. So that means uh, you don't have a lot let's hope that like a container doesn't have any visual elements really it has position and dimensions but it, it doesn't 
have color and stuff like that. So you hope that the things inside, uh, what do we have? Properties, type, and display. Display, reference to the waiter backing graphic. Uh-oh, so we've got a backing graphic. Uh, not much in a waiter then. You might have to do get child at, to, but like when would you, a waiter is just three little dots that go, three little dot, dot, dots. Maybe if you set a timer for three seconds and wanted to change the waiter to red or something like that, it might be kind of tricky to do. Um, a last step, you can always add your own things. So say the waiter's got a shape and you, you want to change a color and you can't change the color of a shape. You could um, make a new rectangle in the, the size of the waiter and the corner of the waiter and add it to the waiter uh, at the bottom and then come up. Uh, you know what I mean? So if we wanted to add something to this pane, we could say new mm, poly. Can't remember how a poly goes, but uh, eight. What is that? <laughs> it's, it's radius first, so maybe we'll make it thirty. Uh, this was the number of corners, uh, I think. Um, so five, and then point five, and then the color red. So point five is how pointy it is. This is the number of. Um, points it will have and this is its radius and its color right uh, dot center on the ask that will probably work okay so we're centering it on ask and then we get this open in default browser there's a star but that star is on top and it's like oh darn you know it's on top let's make it a little bit bigger well okay we'll leave it that size um, it's on top so here it is on bottom dot bot so if we put it on the bottom, it looks like that. And it's now like, oh, but now I can't see it because it's on the bottom. And so we have to then move it up, uh, dot uh, ord. We might have to move it up a few times. If we ord one, that moves it up one layer, but that's still got the backdrop. So the backdrop is probably zero and we've just, now we're behind the pane, but we've got to move it up one more to be in front of the pane. Hopefully this will work. And now we've got a star that is behind the text and above the backdrop. Um, if we set that to dot alp, well, do the alp, I'll just make it yellow and make it bigger, uh, 60. We could have scaled it. Okay, and you get something like that. Now you're, you're on your way to customize. 100 customize components and if you wanted to you could just remove the backing as well so if if you wanted all of this on a star instead 150 make it big enough and backing dot corner backing dot alt or backing dot remove from like that or dispose i guess would have also worked dispose i'm kind of old school we didn't for a while we didn't have disposes on everything now we do and they're better than remove froms Okay, so yay. And you can get rid of the rings as you did before. So you're always welcome to add your own custom shapes and stuff to an existing component and remove the existing backdrop. Uh, some of the components like buttons already have that available for you and a label, label and buttons already have that as a, 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 back, a backing parameter. So if you wanted to do a backing parameter on a button, you just say backing. It's also got an icon parameter where you pass in the icon. But anything that is a container can have your own stuff put into it. All right, I think that's a good place to end here in, in Zim and uh, the uh, Zim Explore. I am Dr. Abstract. It's been a delight to be with you. Um, come on and join us at zimjs.com slash discord zimjs.com slash slack we would love to see you there and uh, spread the word about zim cheers bye bye